Good morning, Bowhunter Die fans. It's, uh, I don't even know what date it is. It's late August, and uh, I am headed out to that new farm that I'm hunting this year with Justin and Tommy, and uh, we're gonna get some food plots in. So it's early, it's Saturday morning. It's about seven o'clock, 7.15. I'm supposed to meet Tommy out there here just shortly, and uh, we're gonna bang out some work and get these food plots done for the year. So um, just loaded up the bucket of the tractor, got some seed, my seed spreader, couple of trail cameras, um, got the tiller hooked up in the back end of it last night, and uh, go out there and get all this done. So it'll be a little different format than what I've done in the past. I'm not gonna share how I'm planting the food plot this week, um, but instead I think what we'll do is talk a little bit about where we're putting the food plots and what the strategy is and how we plan on hunting these things this year. So I've got, I don't know, 20 minute drive in the tractor. <laughs> so I'm gonna drive through uh, suburban Illinois on a tractor, which is always fun. But uh, once I get there, I'll give you guys another update and uh, don't go anywhere. It's the good- Never walking again. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? Oh, this is the way to travel. Oh, heck yeah it is. I love this thing. These beans look better than I thought they were gonna. Yeah, they look great. Yeah, they look really good. Yeah, the camera in the middle of the plot doesn't make them look as good as they actually are. Ready to do some work. Let's do it. You got the machine. See? Nice. So, a quick update for everybody. Basically, what we're doing is we are on the north end of this property. We've got a big destination food source field just on the other side of this power line. And, uh, Tommy and Justin have had some pretty close encounters with big deer that haven't quite resulted in dead deer, but they were good ones right here in this general area in the next food plot over that we're gonna plant today as well. So our goal here is see if we can't suck these deer into this area as kind of a staging area before they go out and hit food. Um, and boy, these beans look awful good in here. So hopefully, hopefully we can make that happen, so. We're gonna get a couple of things squared away here and then we'll kind of explain how we're planting this and what we're gonna be doing with these beans today. And uh, we'll give you another update then. Don't go anywhere. So what Alf and I are gonna do in here, we've got this beans plot. I don't know, it's probably a half acre or so. It's not giant. But uh, we're gonna split this thing in a line from the tree stand that we're sitting next to right now. And one half, we're just gonna overseed these beans and um, you know we're gonna use a little bit of this clover mix that we've got. And then the other side, what we're gonna end up doing is, is we're gonna overseed the other side with radish seed. And the goal is, is to have the line where the two are gonna come together leading right up to the tree stand. That way if you have deer coming in any particular direction, no matter what they wanna eat, we should probably have a chance at getting a shot at, the, um, at that deer. So, um, you know, these beans, they're gonna drop their leaves in probably the next month or so. And once that happens, if you just overseed and broadcast into this, this brassica, this clover mix, you know, it will all grow at that point. It'll be a little bit late, but we'll have some, you know, some extra food that will come up underneath the canopy from underneath these beans and hopefully last us well into the late season. So just got done putting all that clover seed down. And now the plan, I bought a, a great big sack, a 50 pound sack of uh, daikon radishes. So for those of you not familiar with those, those are those long skinny radishes. They're almost shaped like a banana, the root on them. And uh, I've planted a lot of brassicas in my life. I get mixed results depending on what part of the state, what part of the country, what farm you're on. Some deer like them, some deer don't. But I have had better luck with radishes on pretty much every farm I've ever planted them. And they will eat the top starting probably middle of October and then they will go down and they will eat the root as late as like March, even into April if it's still there. So we're gonna plant the other side of the plot in these radishes and that should be a nice late season food source for us. Um, I mean, they'll of course eat the beans late season as well, but I don't anticipate these beans being here into the late season. I think the deer are gonna work them over pretty good between now and then, so. Uh, I'm going to top dress these and then we're going to move on to the next plot. Okay. 
so um, last thing we're doing is we're gonna stick one of these fusion cell cams in here. So I've had this in here for a number of weeks now. Uh, we've gotten a bunch of small bucks in here and hopefully show you a couple pictures right now of some of the bucks that we've had, but the plan at this point is just stay out. So we're done, we've put the food in here. We know there's a big destination field just north of here. You know, the thing about this property is it's big and there's not a whole lot of like real clear, concise like lines or changes in cover. It's, it's one of those properties where there's always been good deer on it, um, but it's hard to hunt. It's really hard because the deer don't have a whole lot of terrain features that kind of funnel them or push them into specific areas. And our goal with this spot is basically, we know they generally head north. We know they like to feed in that field. I actually filmed a couple of decent bucks this summer in that field from the road. Um, can we get them to pinch through this spot before they actually get to the destination field and hopefully get a shot at one? That's, that's kind of the plan in here, so. Uh, we're going to get this camera turned on, get it all set up, get out of here, and then hopefully just observe it with a camera. And uh, with any luck, hopefully me, Elf, Justin, or maybe even Dustin DeCrew will have a chance to shoot a good buck out of this plot this year. All right, so Tommy and I just got done turning over this other little tiny, I'll call it a micro plot. It's not that far. It's maybe 100 yards away from the other plot. And uh, the goal behind this one was a very similar strategy where these deer go out into the big destination field just to the north of us here. Uh, but they were hoping to, you know, Justin and Tommy put this in, I don't know, like three, four years ago, something like that. And uh, their goal was, could they get a couple of these deer that are on this giant piece of property with no terrain edges or breaks to filter through this little pinch point and it worked pretty well. And uh, this tree that you can kind of see up behind me here, this big pine tree, Tommy, you want to tell them what, uh, what they what you guys call that tree <laughs> that white pine tree right there is called tree of tears <laughs> because every time you climb down after a buck encounter you're crying <laughs> so justin kicked it off with, with his uh tommy boy with tommy boy yeah put a little you know a week and the, the problem is the deer come in here at like 18 yards, it's this super easy chip shot, and we have both failed miserably on trying to kill deer, and good deer. Yeah, so Czar had a whiff on Tommy Boy, uh, Alf had a whiff on Jimmy Dean, both giants. I'm still catching crap. <laughs> but the funniest thing about this story is that I've walked through here probably a dozen times in the last few months. Alf has walked through here, God only knows how many times, and directly underneath this tree stand, so this is the tree. Tommy walked in here today and found that right there. So I'm gonna go grab that real quick. <coughs> Not a giant, but a nice four point side. And it's just hilarious that uh, directly under the tree of tears, we both missed a shed this year, so. They're messing with us. Yeah. So we got this plot planted. We got some cereal rye in here with a little bit of uh, radishes mixed into it. Keep our fingers crossed for some rain because that's all we need at this point. And we are gonna head to the south end of the, the lease. And we got one more big food plot to bang out down there. So I'll give you guys a few more updates once we get there. So Tommy and I are down here on the south plot right now. Um, this is a spot, him and Justin put this in how long ago? Five years ago probably five years ago, but I think it was a lot smaller plot when they put it in and they've gradually opened it up over time. So um, I came in and I tilled all of this, um, I don't know, it was a month or two ago just to turn it over. Justin came in and sprayed it and uh, I put in some soybeans. And as you can see, they're doing okay. It's maybe not the greatest soil quality. Um, they're kind of sparse and you can tell that there's a pretty good browse line on them. So. The deer are in here and they're eating them, but I don't think that this is gonna make it till deer season. So what we're gonna end up doing today is I think we're just gonna broadcast radishes directly into these, let them stay the way that they are. If they don't make it to deer season, that's fine because the radishes will. And um, hopefully we've got a nice good sized plot here that will last us well into the late season. So it's, uh, you know, this is a great spot. When I first came onto the property this year, and scouted everything. I feel like this southern part of the property has a lot more terrain features and things like that that make it a little bit easier to maybe pattern a deer. And um, you know, we've got a big swamp directly to the north. 
Um, we've got some real mature trees to the east of this, and it just kind of creates a bunch of good break lines in transition. And I think we all know deer are creatures of transition. That's where they like to live. So um, there is no destination food anywhere reasonably close to this. And I don't think this is the kind of plot that I would call a destination food plot, but this one could survive well into the late season if we stack the right kind of food in here and enough of it. So that's kind of the, the goal is get a bunch of food in here and hopefully it will last until the late season and hopefully we get a chance to shoot a deer over it. And even if we can't shoot a deer on it, um, I think this plot being in the southern part of this, this property, it's just going to make the movement maybe a little bit more consistent on this part, on this piece of the property because it's all timber and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, hopefully if nothing else, it will just, you'll get consistent movement of deer moving to and from this, even if we aren't hunting directly on the plot. Um, some of the, some of the movement patterns around it because of this being here might become a little bit more huntable for us. So that's the plan. We've got a bunch of seed to get in the ground, so we're going to get after it. And uh, we'll give you guys maybe one more quick update when we're done here. So <laughs> I uh, smashed my finger in between the tractor and a tree, but uh, I did stick it out and we got the rest of this seeded. So that's good. Alf got all of this sprayed and these are Roundup Ready beans. So there's a lot of weeds in here and that'll hopefully knock some of the weeds back. So when we finally get some rain, hopefully the beans will sprout up and it'll get these, uh, these radishes to germinate that we put in here today. But basically the whole thing, I just top dressed it and radishes. Uh, I'm not telling it. I'm not going to try and cover them up. You know, if we get a rain, they should germinate and we should get some good coverage in here. So got another stealth cam stuck in here. Um, you know, basically this little pinch point that I'm standing in right now, and you can kind of see if you look over my shoulder, the tree stand is right up there. Um, should give us an idea in terms of what's filtering in and out of here. We've got kind of an odd three-year-old buck that's been in here quite a bit over the past few weeks. He's got no tail. <laughs> so he's very easily identifiable. I don't know how that happens, but uh, I don't know if he was born with no tail or if something took his tail off or what happened, but kind of a cool looking deer. Um, I don't know if I'd shoot him or not this year, but hopefully he lives in here and feels comfortable and gets nice and old. So we've got probably a little more work on this farm. We probably got to swing back in maybe one more time before now in season, get some tree stands trimmed out and uh, kind of put the final touches on this place. But we're pretty close. The food plots are done and uh, cameras are up and now we just need some deer to cooperate. So uh, i got a few more things to do on another farm today, but uh, appreciate you guys watching. And uh, until next time, bow hunter die. Bow hunter die. All right. <laughs>